We are going to have a cat butt in the corner. I'm not sure how long she's gonna stay. She's watching the leaves blow around in the wind outside. So that's just what we're gonna deal with. That's what we're running with. She's way too cute to move, so uh, she's staying there. Hello, everybody. Um, I have been playing with the tarot playbook. I bought it after doing the tarot whodunit and it arrived earlier this week and I've just been having so much fun doing the activities in it that I wanted to share that and maybe offer some fun things that you can do with your tarot deck if you want. So one of the activities that I have been doing from the book that I just did actually today is this is a homemade box. <laughs> I don't think I've ever shown this that I made. I took this from the Woodland Wardens Oracle deck and made a box for the herb crafters because I don't carry the book with me. I don't feel like I need it. And I wanted a smaller case for the deck. So I did that. So I have some chores to do today and one of the activities that you can do for bonding and playing with your deck is, I think you're supposed to draw cards, but I just picked them out that reminded me of the chore that I needed to do. So this one, I need to do laundry, and this one, of course, reminded me of the laundry to do. So this in my list is actually finished, so I can put that away. And then the kitchen was kind of messy, so I wanted to clean that up. So I have that here. I am making dinner today and I made lentils and they take about an hour. So I wanted to kind of prep for that. So I prepped the kitchen and the ingredients and that was from there. I have a couple of videos that I want to edit. And so this cutting is what would remind me of that. And then I want to do something to kind of honor my ancestors today. And this card, if you've seen my walkthrough, just screams ancestor energy to me. So it was the obvious choice. So I have my list of things to do. I think I'm going to keep these three out of the deck for right now, just because I need, I need my list still. <laughs> I need my to-do list. And it's kind of the book was suggesting to use the cards as your to-do list. So you don't have to write a to-do list anymore because you've got this. I also, excuse me, Bean. Of course she was on my book, I'm sorry. I also have been, I played this one yesterday and it's called Through the Peephole. And it's, um, where you cut out a piece of craft paper and you put a hole in it and then you shuffle the cards and try and see what the card is without seeing the whole card. And I feel like this might have been cheating a little bit just because I know this deck so well. I did it for a couple yesterday and got them so quickly. So I wanted to test my skills and see if I could do that again today. So I'm just shuffling it up and we'll see. Okay, I'm going to uh, I'll shut my eyes and flip the card over and put, I'll show you all so you can see. And then I'll put this card over the card that I picked and you will know what it is and I will not. So I'm shutting my eyes now. Oh, sorry. I forgot to show you. I hope this is in frame because I can't see. Okay. 
I think this is the Madre of Earth because this looks like the plant. Oh. Okay, we'll only do a couple because I feel like this could get a little bit old and boring if all I'm doing is guessing them right. So here's the second one. Okay. Ooh, this is the first one that's kind of difficult for me. Let me see. So this looks like a spoon from here. Um... So I've got a couple thoughts. I don't think that it's the seven of fire. Here, let me hold it up so that you can see. I don't think it's the seven of fire, but the darkness looks like that to me. I really am stumped on this one. And this, I look at me, I was bragging before and the cards were like, yeah, we'll show you. <laughs> I don't know what this one is. Should I give up? Okay. I'm going to shut my eyes again and flip the hole over so that I can see if there's something else in this card. Because I don't want to give up just yet. I'm determined to try and get this. So I'm going to shut my eyes and put it up here. Okay, my eyes are open. Oh, this is a water card. I think this is the uh, Madre of Water or the Ica, but I think it's the Madre because I think that's the tiles for it. <gasps> what? I can't believe I was wrong. Wow. And this was my chore card. And it's so wild to see the little details that I have never noticed until that's all that there is of the card. Because I swear these tiles look very, very similar to the kind of court water cards. And the spoon totally threw me off. Wow. Not doing too hot. All right, let's see the next one. We'll put this down here so I've got a little different thing. Okay, my eyes are open. Oh, this is the four of fire. We'll do two more and see if I, if it was a fluke that I got that one wrong or if I don't know my deck as well as I think I do. Oh, this is the Eha of Earth. Sorry, I keep showing it out of frame. Okay. And one more. This is the two of water. So there are still new things that I can learn about this deck that this has shown me, this card. So don't underestimate, no, don't overestimate how well you think you know your deck because it can surprise you. So I also wanted to pick one of these and do it on camera just to give you all kind of um, a feel for the language because I love it. It's so lighthearted and it really shows you that while tarot is serious and should be taken seriously, it's not always something you have to be so serious about. And you can and should play a little bit. And it is something that helps connect to the inner child, just being silly. And it also like brings that bond with you because then you can go to the tarot for anything. And it doesn't have to be this huge ritual thing. Although those rituals make the tarot sacred, it can also make the tarot kind of feel like you can't go to it. It's unapproachable almost because of the pedestal that it gets put on. So having some time to play with the deck and have a more casual relationship with it isn't a bad thing because then you can do both that ritual 
and the play with it. So uh, let's let the deck decide if it's not a task that's too big or anything like that. Which one do you want to do? What activity should we do together? Okay. The deck wants to do the king of air. So that'd be the king of swords. Let's go back here, find um, king of swords is on page 138 and it's wisdom of the majors. Wow, oh my gosh. I <laughs> bookmarked this for myself Oh, yesterday while I was flipping through. That is so funny that the deck did that. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to read this to you and um, we'll take it um, for a ride. We'll try it out. Wisdom of the Majors, King of Swords. If you need advice, ask your best friend. If your best friend's out of town, ask your mom. If your mom just doesn't get it, ask your grandma. If grandma's too busy street dancing, there's only one place left to turn. Not only are the major arcana cards wise and profound, they also have aeons of time on their hands and are only too happy to spend it enlightening you. One, first think of a problem for which you could use some advice. If your life is currently problem free, consider seeing a therapist to help you dredge up some of your hidden trauma. <laughs> Two, shuffle the major arcana whilst inwardly stewing about your problem. Three, kneel or sit on the floor and deal the major arcana cards face down in a rough semicircle in front of you. Four, close your eyes and ask the cards to grace you with their infinite wisdom. Five, start with the card nearest to your left hand, turn it face up, stop, look, and listen. Wait for the card to speak. Do not feel tempted to hurry it up. It takes time to be profound. When you receive the wisdom of the tarot elders in this way, don't be disappointed with what may appear to be trivial statements. The major arcana cards may be powerful, but they still have to communicate using our simple human language, and thus, great insight may be disguised within simple phrases. For example, the empress says, the daffodils are lovely at this time of year, don't you think? Always such happy faces. Write it down so you can ponder its great wisdom over time. Once the card has spoken, turn it face down again to prevent it from waffling on. Do the same for all 22 cards, then review your notes. Take whatever wisdom is most beneficial and ignore the rest. I read through this yesterday and thought it was such a fun idea. So let's do it. I'm gonna sort out the majors and I will see you back then. Okay, so I have my Major Arcana all separated out. I have a journal to write out my thoughts and I have a pen. I'm using the Caveco Sport. This is the collection, this is Dark Olive. I'm just gonna use this because it is what I had in my shirt pocket. <laughs> And it's the closest pen that I've got. So I'm going to shuffle these up. Thinking about my problem that I'm stewing on. Let me think of a problem. Let's see. Okay, I've got my problem and I stewed and I stirred. And now it's time to begin. I don't think that that card. Okay, I'm gonna raise you guys up a little bit and hopefully we can 
get most of the cards in the shop. So, uh, she said, deal them in a semicircle. My circle's not gonna be a full, nice circle. It's not gonna look that good, I don't think. And let's put these closer together. I was never good at drawing circles that look like nice circles. So my semicircle is not looking too hot either. But as long as the cards give us the wisdom that we are looking for, I don't think it matters how nice the circle looks. At least that's what I'm telling myself. Okay, we just fit the last card down here. You can't see it. So I'm going to go ahead and go through the cards one by one and we'll see what wisdom we get. So our first card is the High Priestess. So I think that she is telling me to listen to my intuition and that I'll know when it's time to begin this project that I'm taking on. So let's write that down. Okay, so the High Priestess gave us her wisdom and then it says put the cards face down when you're finished because then they won't blab as much and fill it up. So next wisdom is the world. So I think the world is telling me that I'm coming close to the end of the planning phase and it's more time for bringing it into the real world and taking this to the next level. It's that it's time to update. Well, actually it's time to upgrade. <laughs> Advice number three is the Empress, which is also Arcanum number three. So that's kind of interesting. Okay, what is she saying to me? I think the Empress is telling me that once I take it out of that thinking and planning phase, like the world was recommending, that I'll really get some steady um, creative and physical growth from this project. So growth is on the horizon for me. Card number four advice is the lovers. So this is something that I have to commit to and make that conscious effort and choice and decision to follow through with this for better or for worse and to let it teach me. So it's telling me it's time to make that commitment to this project. And the cat butt is back if you haven't noticed. The magician is just telling me that I've got this. That's all. Go get him, tiger. <laughs> the devil. There's definitely going to be some shadow work and some shadow that shows up through this process. And the devil is reminding me not to run away from the shadow, but to face it head on because once you look at it, it doesn't stay in the dark or stay in the shadow. The final card 
is my favorite strength. I think this card is just encouragement and saying that I am strong enough to do this. I have a whole page of guidance and wisdom. And the book said something like, take whatever wisdom is most beneficial and ignore the rest. Um, the advice that I received, I think the most important ones were the lovers, which is it's time to fully commit to what I am trying to do. And it's time to make that decision that this is what I wanna do and I know that in my heart and so I need to commit to it. The Emperor is kind of another good one, but I think the hanged one is very important. It says, don't be afraid to take your first step into this project that I'm thinking about doing. These steps are the hardest to take, but they're also the most important because first steps get you started. And once you make that first initial effort, it only gets better and it's only gonna get easier from there. That was me playing with the tarot playbook. I hope that you all enjoyed. I hope that this is maybe an activity that you choose to do for yourself. If there's ever something that you are grappling with and need a little bit of assistance, I think that this is a great way to do that. If you enjoyed watching this activity or the activities that I chose to kind of show, please definitely consider picking up a copy of the Tarot Playbook. It is chock full of amazing activities. There are 78 ways to connect with your cards and each one is so unique and so different and it's just incredible. I think that it's well worth your money and time. That's all I've got for now. Uh, thank you so much for watching and I will see you all next week.